Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss, with a few more words about Manuel de Falla's extraordinary piano work, Andaluza. I recently released a video about common scoring errors, which I want all my entrants to watch, so you have some general tips about what to avoid in your own orchestrations, and particularly these annual orchestration challenges. Now let's briefly look over some pitfalls about Andaluza to avoid, especially if you're a developing orchestrator. The first thing to think about is tempo. The tempo that I've indicated in my orchestration templates is a bit slower than the speed that most pianists play this work. While I think it's really important to hear how great pianists interpret a piano work before you orchestrate it, especially in the case of Andaluza, you also have to understand that at higher speeds, the material will tend to sound rushed and less clear with an orchestra playing it. That doesn't mean that the orchestration will feel too slow. Far from it but just that if you really want to interpret some of the more virtuosic gestures, you'll need to slow it down a trifle from what you hear on the reference recording I've provided, or the other great interpretation by Alicia de la Rocha. Let's talk about those virtuosic gestures, because that's where I'm anticipating a lot of tripping up. The truth is that the way piano technique works is quite different compared to most orchestral instruments, and the orchestrator has to make allowances. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to solve these problems, that would take all the fun out of it, but just pointing out certain things that orchestral players would find difficult or even impossible to play at the tempo and energy required. One of these is broken octaves at machine gun speed. You can pretty much count on bassists, tuba players, trombonists, and yes, even bassoonists and bass clarinetists having a problem playing this line at tempo. And even much, much slower, a single brass or woodwind player would soon run out of breath. So you'll have to reinterpret this line in some way. Also, trading off between instruments will be very hard on the player who has to play the alternating notes. Another possible pitfall is a section like this one, in which the actual line of the music is looping around in a pattern, even though Faya has chosen to score each note separately and sustained. The problem is that orchestral instruments scored in exactly this way will disguise that sense of percussive motion that you hear on piano. And if you instead just score out the pattern instead of the sustained notes, then it's difficult on a single player to sustain at that intensity and speed for very long. Your instinct may be just to throw the harp in there, but then we run into the problems I mentioned in the scoring errors video, which is that harp-saturated orchestral music is usually pretty unconvincing. And especially when harp technique would be useful, the music in the piano score doesn't really fit the instrument. Low broken octaves will get extremely blurry and be difficult to distinguish. While furious patterns don't really project very loudly on harp, especially right after a huge orchestral statement, So you can see that not only is Andaluza a terrifically exciting piece to tackle, it's also very challenging. Solving these problems in my own score was pretty tricky, but I was able to do it. What I found the most challenging, though, was making the transitions between passages perfectly smooth and inevitable sounding. Or at least I hope they'll sound that way to the listener. I'll release my orchestration of the complete movement at the end of the challenge on the 19th of August, after which I'll start releasing my evaluations of everyone else's entries. I'm really looking forward to a lot of great entries this year, so get going on yours now.